Hey all, Satish here. Uh, today let's start with UART communication. UART along with I2C are uh, probably the most commonly used protocols in any embedded system application. So let's see how we can write a UART driver in MPLAB. So we'll be writing both the transmit and the receive functions. And I'll also give you some additional functions uh, which will be useful while you're communicating to your, for example, a modem, or uh, Wi-Fi module. So you will need some functions. I will explain it as we start coding. So let me go to the data sheet. So UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receive and Transmit. So if let us uh, look at the timing. The initial line will be high. There will be a start bit, then 8 data bits and a parity bit. Parity bit is no parity, even parity and odd, odd parity is available and one stop bit. So you can see uh, theoretically what, what is this parity bit. Okay, now let us get back to our data sheet. So let us start with the transmit function. So if you see here, um, so the pins for this are, we are using pic 16 f 877A. So TX, RX, TX is for transmitting means uh, you are, there is a separate line for transmitting and a separate line for receiving. So both can happen together. So in TX, you will transmit the data in RX, you will receive the data. So the TX of this device will be connected to the RX of a device which you are communicating. It will be a cross connection. TS of this to the RX of that and RX of this to the TX of the other device which you are trying to communicate. RC6 is TX, RC7 is Rx. Okay, now let us uh, go to our MPLAB code, mm, header file and source file. Let me create a header file for uart.h and a source file for uart.h. Include H. So let us write the function to initialize. You are void, you are initialize void. Let me prototype it in uart.h. Like check out all the other chapters before that you come here because you might not understand few the things I am doing here. So if you go to the data sheet mm, here, let us go to UART section. So the TX status is transmit status and control register. So for transmitting we have to set up this register. So let us see and we are going to use asynchronous mode. So you can, uh, so generally everybody are going to use asynchronous mode only. So UART actually stands for universal asynchronous transmission and receiver. You can see what is the synchronous mode. I am not going to go through that. So TX STA, STA is equal to 0 B. Each bit we have to go through, bit 7, don't care, asynchronous mode, don't care. Then TX, we are 8 bit transmission or 9 bit transmission, we will go for 8 bit transmission that is commonly used. Most of the 4G or 2G modules or the UART module, most of the times it is 8 bit only. Transmit enable bit, do you want to enable the transmit? Yes, I enable the transmit, then which mode? Synchronous mode or asynchronous mode? We are going for asynchronous mode, unimplemented, 0. Baud rate high or low, uh, baud rate high or low we will go with, uh, so I am going to uh, write the code for 9600 baud rate. For 9600 baud rate based on this there is a formula if baud rate is low and baud rate is high. They are given some examples here also. So baud rate high are generally used when your baud rates are high like 115200 those kind of things. See for example if the baud rate 
this bit is low you can get lower baud rates that is 1.2 9.6 is 9600 is what we are going to do it for. So, it is available you can do it in both but at low it is more uh, easier for lower baud rates. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Baud rate is, I will go for asynchronous mode, low, low baud rate. Then transmit shift register, this is internal register, what is the status of the transmit uh, shift register. So, while configuration does not matter, I will make this one 0, 9th bit data transmission can be parity. So, I will just uh, make both of them 0. I am going to use 8 bit mode only. Just make sure there are 8 bits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, now starting uh, this trans, this is I have set up the trans, uh, transmit register. Receiver I will not do now. First, let us finish the transmitter and then come back to receiver. So, now you will have a separate register for baud rate, setting up the baud rate. What baud rate are you going to? communicated. So, in view what what happens there is no clock signal. So, if clock signal is there based on that it will know what the uh, what rate the transmitter is transmitting. So, the receiver can identify at what rate it is going to receive. So, in case of UART there is no clock. So, what happens both the transmitter and receiver should be at the same baud rate for it to transmit or receive rate data. So, there is a formula there is a formula here for setting up the baud rate for our 9600. So, let me just open excel and set it up. So, we want 9600 baud rate. So, that is a very uh, common thing. Suppose, you are using a 4G modem or something like that, like a quick tell which I demo, it will get 115200. For that, what you have to do is you have to go for baud rate high, because it is lower baud rate you will not get that value. So, let us uh, map this out. So, it is uh, baud rate, V1 baud rate 9600, then there is uh, V1 this baud rate, then there is uh, X in this formula frequency of oscillation, we are F O S C, we have set our code to run at 8 megahertz. 8 exponential 6, 8 megahertz and this is the register that is uh, SPBRG. It is an 8 bit register where it can vary from 0 to 255. So, the formula for baud rate is, it is baud rate is frequency oscillation divided by 64 into that register plus 1. So, I have just done this baud rate. For example, if I set it at 1, my baud rate is this. So, if you see their examples, uh, this for example, this 16 megahertz, we are half of this. For 9600, it is 25. With my 8 megahertz, it should be half of this 25 means around 12 if I put I get 9.62 then we, we, we are hoping it to be what we want is 9600 9600. So, if you want to see percentage uh, error nothing but all this minus whatever the set value divided by a reference value into 100. It is about 1 percent. There is a 1 percent error in the, okay. So, my SPRG register should be 12 to get 9600 baud rate, 12. Hope you are able to understand. For example, if you want 9000 um, some other baud rate, you can see what is the value. You can enter the value and see what is the baud rate. If you do not want to see in uh, 
this 9615 is the baud rate you are getting. So, the error is not 1.6 actually, it is 0.16 that is more than enough, so not 1.6. So, now I have now I've initialized the UART, I have set up the register, set up the control registers and I have set up the baud rate. So, next what I have to do here is, <coughs> so setting up asynchronous transmission, this baud rate I have done. I have done uh, enable synchronous, I have done this as a part of this register itself, then if you want interrupt you can enable interrupt. So, I am we are not going to set up the interrupt here, it is uh, for reception we will set up the interrupt, for transmit we will just wait for it. So, void you send character and send character you see data. So, if I want to transmit this data what I have to do here is I have to first uh, put it into the load the data into the TX register. After setting up I have to load the data into the TX register and I have to wait for this flag to be set. So, let me, so before transmission is equal to 0, I have cleared it and I have to wait while is equal to is equal to 0, I will be in this loop. So, you have to, so you have to wait in this loop until this flag is set. Basically, if I have cleared it, if the flag is cleared, I will wait here. Once this transmission is complete, internally this flag will be automatically set. To know about that, uh, you have to go to this register. So, this TXIF PAR1, if you search for this register, your transmit buffer is empty. Basically, it means that it has completely transmitted the data. So, you are waiting until, so the, all the data bit by bit it is shifted out of this register. So, once it is empty this flag will be set. So, <clears throat> so you can wait here, once it is initialized then it will never uh, hang here actually. So, it, it is generally it will come out of this function because this is an infinite loop. For example, if this flag is not set then your code will be stuck here. So, if you have initialized this generally will not happen and here let me CLR watchdog timer CLR watchdog timer this is it and it is also better to include this here also so that we are uh, getting all the registers yeah we are able to get could get all this register. So, you want to send any transmitter call this function, you have to initialize first. Without initialization if you call this it will hang. So, before here let me initialize. Uh, so, I have to call that include ur dot h. So, then this will be called. Then transmit data. Let me transmit a data here and check it out. So, we have a code here to display. So, let that also be running. So, I let me transmit for character it is single quotes and let me transmit uh, E. Let me build this. Okay, before that one more thing that I had to do was I have to set this pin as output during initialization. So, that is, um, so in iomap.h we have done direction output, output is 0. So, let me, uh, I have to make that transmit pin as output. So, before this that is, um, which pin is that? TX RC6, RC6 I have to make it as 
output for that it was twist c bits dot twist c 6 is equal to output mistake rc 6 tx so this we have to do make the pin output set up the you are transmit register set up the baud rate and send character and we, I am clearing the flag I am not using any interrupt here I, because I will wait generally here at this point we will not go for interrupt for transmission this is easier and for reception I will write an interrupt. So may in the main I am transmitting E every 500 milliseconds ok let me build let me see if there is any error there is an error Stalling. this you are saying is invalid c99 i think this doesn't have a prototype i think that is the error yeah let's see now so if there is any warning it is better to clear it out here itself converting int to unsigned long so if unsigned long it should not have mattered because you are transmitting a smaller number into a bigger variable or a data type so that should not matter and the next one is double to float uh, this I think it will take as double so let me hopefully this both this error would have gone away like keep all the warnings to the minimum anything not called function not called do not worry about it ok let us uh, come to our proteus so if you remember uh, if we you have to come here and load the hex code this is where the hex code is so in proteus you have to rig this up and you have to show where is the hex code if you have seen your earlier or earlier chapters you would know it ok now this has a terminal virtual instrument virtual terminal so here this tx should go to the rx so if i run now i should see that uh, e coming every 500 milliseconds Hmm, it is not running basically what it means here is when this is not running so I think I have not initialized as I told you if you do not initialize it the code will hang there I have done uart initialize output is transmission just check the variable ones asynchronous mode do not care then 0 is 8 bit and 1 is transmit enable asynchronous mode low ok I have to do the serial port enable pin also and this I will do or else what happen is the serial port is not enabled yet that is the reason equal to 0 b serial port enable then receiver also is getting configured here I will configure the receiver also 8 bit mode asynchronous do not care asynchronous mode enable continuous receive means if as soon as character keeps on coming it will be continuously listening to it let me enable that enable continuous receive then I have address detect for asynchronous bit 9 bit so I am not going to use in 9 bit mode disable address detection sorry 0 framing error 
one these are like status flag if there is a framing error or overrun it this will be set one two three let's now so since i had not set this bit uh, the uart had not been properly initialized so your program was not running it had stopped here so build now hopefully it should work yeah it has come here see you can see this e coming so you are now you are able now we have written a driver to transmit a single character so now let's uh, transmit a string for that instead of send character we'll have void you what send string and in case of string we pass the pointer character pointer to that and puc data so now i'll go through each string and each character in a string until null comes so basically what happens in a string here is for example uh, it is a uh, satish and the it should string is always terminated by 0x00 okay so after satish if i have given like this my this is my uh, string which i am passing the st end of the string after the satish there will be a 0x00 in the memory that is how the string is terminated so i have to transmit this pointer data in the pointer uh, data pointed by the pointer until you get 0x00 so what i'll do here is while so we had used that in display also if you remember display dot c when we did uh, write string so we had done this until the pointer the content of the pointer becomes zero you loop through each of them so i'll just copy this puc data instead of write i am going to use send character so <clears throat> basically what i am doing here is puc data let's assume i have passed satish into this so initially so this ram location will be for example let's start with uh, location 1 for example 0 0 will have uh, s 1 will have a t 2 uh, will have like the i until at the end of satish it will have the uh, the data content will be 0x00 means the content will be 0x00 okay this keeps on going like this 3 4 5 6 7 this is the address location s will be in 0 a will be in 1 and i think uh, 6 or 7 it will be 0x0 end of termination so now i am passing this address that is what i am going to do 0 i will pass so i am passing the pointer which is point uh, pointer to this so it should start from zero while content of the address location so it will be s it will not be zero it will be s then what i'll do is i'll send character s and also increment the address by plus plus will increment the address to 1 the next time a will transmit t s h so when it comes to this location 0x00 this data in that address is 0x00 the while will terminate okay you can do some how pointers works you will be able to know that is very quickly how it works okay so let me prototype this so while using the drivers you can use it as it is so here uh main so after initialization let me do this so my data from pick 16 of 877a this is the data i'm transferring i have to cast it to unsigned character means i'm pa passing the address location of this string so now let's see what happens 
it should transmit this and after that it should start transmitting E E E. See data from PIC 16 of 877 and this E is coming. Okay. So, now we have transmitted data I means a character a string. Now, as we did in display we need uh, the driver for transmitting a number and a float number an integer and a float number. So, before that no, uh, if you see in display dot c we had used this uh, function which will convert float to ascii string and all these things. I have not gone through all of them. You can go through it when you have time, but we are going to use the same set of functions for the uart also. So, what I what I generally do here is I will create a um, header and source file called as general functions. All these general functions I will put in there functions dot h then I will put new source file general functions dot c okay, let me include general functions dot h and these things uh, which are not specific to this driver right float is specific to this driver these functions I will move it to general functions dot c similarly display dot h the prototype also I will move it to general functions dot h but now in display I have to call general functions else it will not know where that function is. So, if I build this it should show some error telling that implicitly required it is not able to find that. If I do general functions dot h that error will go away. Now, it knows that these functions which I am uh, calling here are in general functions dot yeah, it has built properly. So, now uh, for uart also let me do that. So, what I will do is I will just copy paste from my other code. So, I will leave a, in the description below I will leave the complete link for the code you can use it directly. So, let me just take that. So, send long and send float these two are what is what we require. So, let me paste this into my code and we also need a prototype for this in our your dot h so now this is there so now uh, you are send long so we can just uh, in this number what we are sending on the display also let me do you are send send long then you are send float float f number comma 4 comma 2 Okay, what I will do is I will show you something else. How if you, if you want something to come on a new line, let us remove this off, it is not useful now. Slash r slash n will give it in a new line and it will be n i number is equal to and this is f number. So, I will not go to the new line, I just put a comma there f number will be the floating point number. 
So if you have seen the previous chapter, I am just incrementing this number by 65 and uh, the float number by 2.86. And here it is 4 integer part and 2 decimal part. You will understand what I mean by that. And here 4 is, even though it is 1, it will be 0001, 4 digits it will show. <coughs> there is an error. Conflict in declaration. I think here I have not called general functions. Because th these functions are, are not here. This is main in ur.ci because these are there in general functions and general function is not being included here. I had explained about all this includes in our I think the first or the second chapter you can go through that. Seems to have built. So let me do this number 0, 65, 130 same numbers are coming in both the flows. Now that completes the transmit section. So now let us get into the receive section. So the receive section you will need uh, interrupts. Why? Because you might be doing something else. You will not know when the data is going to come. You might be printing something on the display. If you do not do it in the interrupt, what will happen? You will completely miss the data. So reception we should always be in um, interrupts or else you will simply miss the data. Now let us go to the data sheet. So here if you see uh, how to receive, yes, uh, UART reception, once it is set up, you should not, you should know what are the registers associated with asynchronous transmission, asynchronous reception, what are the registers. So here this flag will be set when you receive the data. You can go through this one, PAIR1, anyway let us go through this. Well, it's clear. We are in. This is in page one one eight. We'll come back here. You are to receive buffer is full. Means we have received all the eight bytes. This flag will be set. So this flag will be set. But also what you have to do here is you have to enable the receptions. This is flag will be set. See, we have we are still not enable the uh, interrupt. For that you have to do RCIE that is in PIE 1. I think we were in somewhere in 27 I guess. It must be somewhere here only. Let us search for that. Yeah. RCIE enable uni UART receive, receive, receive interrupt. You have to enable this. So just uh, going through this, you have to enable this, this uh, only then you will get the interrupt means whatever your code will be doing as soon as you get receive 8 bytes, you will get an interrupt and this flag will also be set. And there is one more thing, you have to enable GIE and PEIE, this is global inter inter interrupt enable and this peripheral interrupt enable. If GIE is uh, disabled, whatever you do, you will not get any interrupt. If peripheral interrupt is disabled, you will not get this any peripheral interrupts. Okay. So uh, while initialization, we have to do that also. So here, uh, after setting up the baud rate, uh, we had done this in delay dot c. I think we had enabled the interrupt for that. See these uh, global interrupt we had enabled and timer 0 interrupt we had enabled. Your dot c global interrupt I will enable it. 1 is enough but it is better to write in the driver itself because if you are not initialized delay it will not work here. And here it was um, PEIE peripheral interrupt enabled it. PEI dot PEIE I have enabled that. Then uh, this also I have to enable bits dot receiver interrupt enable is equal to 1. So now I have set up all the, I have set up the 
global interval global interval peripheral interval by peripheral interval is a subgroup of global and this peripheral interrupt has multiple interrupt where one of the interrupt is receiver enable that also i have to then only if you do all these three things you will get an interrupt when you receive the data so now what happens is when you receive the data we had set up an interrupt here you have to go through the this is the keyword to get the interrupt okay so now it will be called here we are checking for the timer interrupt there so if uh, we have to also check whether it is from if we have enabled the receiver interrupt this you don't have to check but it is better to check else you have not got this interrupt itself and that bits here rcif par1 bits rcif dot rcif is equal to is equal to 1 what it means here is receiver enable bit is enabled the one bracket is missing this is not required but it is better to have this if this timer is enabled and receiver flag this period, then you know it is a uart reception global interrupt will come here it will see if it is timer 1 is a timer 0 is enabled and if this flag is set i will do the delay isr if receiver bit uh, enable is set and it is a receiver flag means i have received the 8 bytes then i will do uart isr So this I have to create the function, let me create it here itself, void, void, let me prototype it also, okay before that um, it is not that you have to enable the receiver, Receive, receiving will keep on happening, if you have enabled the receiver you will get an interrupt and you can pick up the data. So what I will do here now, let me go to some register, so this is um, what we will do is after this now let me with a small delay, delay millisecond 500, after showing it for 500 millisecond let me do LCD clear, means the LCD will be little clear of the LCD and here I will go to 0x00. And I will uh, display the receive character itself, the character. Now where does, once you receive the data, where does the data come? It will come into this register, you are receive register. So this register should have the received data. See, now I have, I um, will do one thing. Uh, let me disable the interrupts which I had done here. Okay, one thing you have to enable the reception else the data will not come. I am disabled all the interrupts. I am just printing this register. Let us see if anything is coming coming into the register. Data will come into the register, but we will not know. It means the interrupt will not be triggered. So if the interrupt is not triggered, you will not you will not go and fetch the data. Data will come, we will leave there. If new data comes, we will just override that. So we will lose all the data and have only the last received data. So let me build it. Okay, let me run this. So it should come here and it has cleared after 5 seconds. So now here I can type it into the thing. Uh, I can type for example, I am typing H. Then I can, let me turn on the echo typing the character. So let me see S. Yes. So it didn't come here actually, it is not showing there. Mm. Let me see why it is not showing there. So just let us check uh, this one baud rate is 9600, parity is none. One.
Okay, the issue is <laughs> I have not connected this one. That is the issue. Okay, so the Tx of this should be connected to the Rx of this. Now let us run the code. So whatever I type here, that where h I have typed, h has come here, h i, i will come there. So even without you enabling the interrupts, the data will come into this register. Only thing is you have, you should have enabled this, reception enable we have done here. So it has come. But the issue with this thing is you have to always keep on looking at regi that register whether the data has come, whether the data has come. So that uh, is a bit of a issue. So enabling the interrupts will be better. So what I will do here is let me have a variable, <coughs> couple of variables, unsigned character, you see you want receive data. Okay, then I will have a data counter and means how many bytes I have received. Then I will let me have a data flag. I will show you why we, when I will use this flag. Main. I have to prototype for this also. But here I have to make extern. So when I received the data, so what I have done if you come to my main, the interrupt if it has come from RCIA because of you are receiving the data, this ISR will be called and in this ISR I will take from this register into this. The register was, this was the register. So now whatever the data I internally from the microcontroller inbuilt I have transferred it to this variable. So now if I transmit this also the same should thing should happen. I H I. Okay, now I have shifted into this local variable hmm, that is in uart.c I have shifted it to this local variable. Let me increment the counter also to tell that how many bytes of data I have and as soon as I receive this I will set the flag. So as soon as I receive the data this flag will be set. So I'll keep on building. You'll understand why I'm doing all these things. So here, uh, LCD go to LCD write string. Let me put Rx data is equal to that will consume 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So in the fourth location, I can write a right, lot of increment. Don't worry about it. You see, uh, remember the thing. It should have auto. It will auto increment. But any case, any case, I am writing it there as this. What are received data and counter also? Let me write it. Mm, four, five. Let me six. Counter six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you can do it in hex or I'll just pass 11. Instead of write character, I'll write long and you what counter. This is incrementing, I'll write here, comma 4. Let's see what happens now. So let me tell you, the counter is coming high, sorry, click here, H, I, space, O, W, how, A, 
R A. How R? You can write see the counter is keeping on incrementing. So basically what what's happening is our interrupt have started to work. Okay, as if I disable any of these interrupts, then this will stop working means this function will not be called. Disable this uh, code here. And if I disable here delay, then this I will start getting a lot of these numbers. And let me disable this also. Let this be there for some more time. Let's make it uh, 100 milliseconds. So finally, we will remove this delay. So I have received counter in the bottom line. I do not have anything. Now what I will do here is there is no point of receiving this character bus one by one, one by one. I have to put it into a buffer or else voila, every character will come when the next character this, will, uh, this variable will be overwritten. I do not want this to happen. So what I will do here is let me extend find the character you are receive buffer and let me have a size so it, you can have like 1 kb also but this does not have that much byte it only has 368 bytes so let's keep it uh, 25 for define you are receive buffer size 25 so why I am doing is uh, hard defining is so that tomorrow if I want to change to 50 I can just change here and rest everywhere it will become 50 okay. Now you are dot C I have to do here and now here what I will do here is once I will increment the counter if if this counter is greater than my buffer size I will make it in the count this counter to be 0 because I have only 25 bytes of memory I can if I keep if I write on a 26 27 it will start writing somewhere else on the RAM your data will get corrupted. So I will not exceed my maximum size then what I will do receive buffer of What are the counter location is equal to data? Okay, basically what I am doing, and the data comes, I am putting into the buffer. If the buffer size is greater than my size, that is 25 bytes, then I will make it zero. So it will become a cyclic buffer. So now if I want to see this buffer, what I will do in the second line, let me display the buffer. 4 0 for int counter is equal to 0 this is 16 cross 2 I cannot show the 25 bytes also less than 16 I can only show 16 characters because 16 cross 2 display I'll do send character and I will put the buffer counter. So in the second line I am always writing the buffer from 0 to 16th location even though my buffer size is 25 I am only writing 16 because of the display. So if you come to this I am filling the buffer. So let me build this. Okay, now uh, I'll do one thing. I'll disable, uh, stop writing this also because it's kind of simply overflowing. This I will let me comment. Yeah. 
around this. Hi, how are you? You see that? It will overflow. I am fine. It has start after 25th, it has come back to 0. That fine is how about you? See, now that buffer is getting filled and it will, since the cyclic buffer, it will keep overwriting that. Okay. Now, this is how you receive a data and it comes into the buffer. So, now generally what I will, uh, when I am transmitting data into a buffer, no, I would generally prefer it between like uh, this parenthesis or flower brackets like hi, how are you? So, I know where it is starting and where it is ending. So, as soon as I get this first character, I will go to location 0. So, that I'll, it will always start from location 0 or else what will happen? Let us assume your uh, buffer size is 25. Last time you got 23 characters. So, 2 will come in the end and it will roll over and come remaining will come in the beginning. I, it is not advisable to do something like that. So, it is always to have a packet start and packet end some character it can be like dollar hash or something like that or this is simple uh, this is what I generally use during UART provided your data should not have this if your data should have this it will the logic will not work if your data has this then use something else as a starting and ending delimiter so here what I will do here is if that received character is equal to is equal to for this. Then what I will make here is in the starting of the bracket, then I will make this is also uh, counter is 0. So, wherever I do as soon as, soon as it receives this, it will always sync to the beginning. Let me show this. So, let me start in bracket hi. I'm oh, sorry, hi. It will come. So, if I put this bracket again, how are you? It will always come as soon as it receives the starting, it, the buffer, the first 0th position of the buffer will only get filled. Now, I should also end of the buffer, I should know that I have received the full packet. That is when I will take a decision. Until then, I will not go through the data at all. So, what I will do here is, I will use this flag for that. If If the 0th location is equal to is equal to, I am just checking that not double single the character is this and my received data is this. Then what I will do here is I will set this flag. Okay. So, if this flag is set means I have received the packet, my 0th packet, 0th character was this and my last received uh, character, maybe the 10th or 15th or whatever it is, is this. Why I am checking 0th is for example, you have 25 bytes, you transmit 30 bytes. So, the 0th character will not be this because it will have overwritten. So, I am also checking this and this to make sure that I have received the packet. So, this is what I am checking for. Then what I will do, if I have received the packet, so what I will do is, if this flag is equal to is equal to 1, then only I will display a buffer, means I have received the full packet. Okay. So, this flag will be set is equal to is equal to, only when my start starting of the buffer is this and the ending is the last received characters I will set this flag if this flag is set let me clear out the flag or else it will keep coming here every time 
I will display the buffer. So let me start typing into this. I, how are you? As soon as I close this, it will come there. You see that? So now basically what we have done is we are not bothered about whatever is happening in the receiver or all these things. If this flag is set, I am going to process the data. This is an interrupt base. See until this flag is processed, you can do whatever you want with the updating the display or controlling some other device or whatever. And if this flag is set, means I have received the packet, packet which has to be processed. This is only in case if you are transmitting the packet from outside. For example, it is a modem or something, it did not come with a delimit like start of the packet and end of packet, something will come, AT, OK will come. So now I will get into that now. So this is how I usually transmit and receive the packet. So now you are able to transmit the packet, you are able to receive the packet and receive it in an interrupt, fill the buffer and process the packet. Okay. Now what happens here is, now this is good, okay, you are able to transmit, you are able to receive. There are few things, uh, for example, when you are writing a 4G modem, you want to search certain thing in the buffer, whether like OK is there or some special character is there in the buffer for you to take a decision. That is also very important. So the driver transmit and receive is complete here. But I want to give few more functions which will help you in the embedded systems a bit later stage. Like when you are writing, communicating with ESP, Wi-Fi module or modem, 4G or 2G modem. So I should have an ability to search for a string. So in the general functions, I have all that. Float to array, float to array, we had used this. So these things you copy, I will tell these have... Um, I will tell you what are these, the part of the driver just copy this in uh, general functions. String length will get you string length, so it needs success and failure. Uh, Let me go quickly through, go through these functions, get string length, okay, I have to put success and failure, this one also. The success and failure is uh, when it returns something, we want to know if the function was executed successfully or the operation, we search for something, was it a success or failure for that. Okay get string length will get you. So all these things and things are inbuilt in for example microchip it is there. But I do not use that two reason. One reason is it is not platform compatible, uh, cross compatible means if I use it in microchip it might not work in Renaissance or ST micro electronics. So if I write a function it will always work in all the things. Inbuilt things will not work from one microcontroller to another microcontroller. Secondly, I have observed that once you include that, no, a lot of things get included and your program sizes become, it consumes a lot of program memory. So what I have done is I have written the function in a very, very minimal way. You can you can just use it for now and if you are really interested, you can understand, just go through the code and understand how I have written that. Get string length, it will uh, get the string length and it will, the length will be returned as a pointer. Okay, well, uh, means return whatever variable you pass here, it will be written into that. I am using pointers for that. String compare, we do not directly use. Search string is when you want to search a particular string in another string. For example, if you want to search, this is a source string, substring and source string size and which location it is coming. I will show you what this is. I will like, uh, go, I will use this functions at that time you will understand. Then ASCII to integer means basically like for example you want to transmit a value 0, 1, 2, 3 into this. You send it as 0, 1, 2, 3. Like how do you convert that 0, 1, 2, 3 which comes as a string into a integer? We will use this function. Okay. Now let us use search string. So that is uh, one thing. 
So what I want is I'll transmit like high. It has to go through that thing, find high in the string. If high is there, it has to uh, respond by telling hello. That is what I'm trying to do. So for that, I will use this search string. source string. So which string does it have to search in? It has to search in this. What are you searching for? I am searching for high or lean small high. In any string, you have to time cast it to a pointer. Then the size of the source because what happens is when you are passing the this one, no, you do not know what is the end of this one. So telling the that my buffer size is so much, it will only search in that location. Mm, that is, this is my size and location means I will tell you what is the location. Location is where is this high? For example, you have written um, space, space, space high. So the high will be in the fourth location, the third location, which location it is there. That is also required. I will tell you why, why, why this data is useful as we write the code. So now I have to declare uh, to see status you see you will unsend long number. The data type for this is unsign long that is why and I am pausing, passing the address location of that number. Why address location? Because either I can return the address, but I will return whether I found it or not. Then uh, where the this high is there, I will return, I will just point, uh, pass the pointer of this uh, UL number. So in, internally in the function, it will write it into that address location, the pointer. Like I, I think I have to do another class on pointers one day, so it will be much clear. For that, for now, just uh, take this as it is. So you see, status. Okay, first point. If you see status is equal to success, means it has found. It has found high, only then you will get this success, else you will get failure. Okay, Then what I will do here is I will tell back telling um, hello. Hello. Let us see. Third string is invalid. That's because I have not included general functions here. So when I send hi, I should get back hello. Let me just go through the code. First point, the flag will be missed. It has to be between the curly brackets open and close this high should come in between that just high will not work because this flag will be not set let's see slash p slash n See, I got back hello. So now in the received character, I was able to search for a particular string and send back the data. This is very important. The ability to search something is very important. And instead of counter, this counter, let me display this UL number. So 
so let me go here so okay so what it expects 0 1 in 1 this should be 1 because high starts from this is 0th location this is first location let us check, check that also why I am doing it I will tell you because in the next uh, example which I give it will be very useful. I it is in the first location I can do um, 1 2 3 how then if I give high also it still got that high is in this 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7th location it starts ok. So, now you are able to search and Okay, give back a response. So, now for example, let me um, if I am transmitting something like uh, num is equal to uh, this is 2022. I want this 2022 to become an integer. Okay, so, if you are transmitting some configuration into the microcontroller, you want to convert this whatever string comes into an integer, I will show you how to do that. For that, I uh, will take this and here I will not search for high, I will search for num is equal to. So, I will get where the number is and I will not transmit anything. So, let us see what happens. Let me copy this. I have not taken any decision yet. When I paste this, num starts from 0, 1. Okay, my number starts from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 means whatever num is there after that I have to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 digits after I receive this num, the n. I have to take 4 digits and convert this into integer. For that the general function is here. Mm, main So, what is the starting where I have to convert that is um, buffer location is where this number plus 1, 2, 3, 4 plus 4 and number of digits which I have to use is I am passing 4 digits here. So, I will next 4 digits will convert into, into a number. So, let me send it out also. Um, you are send string. You are send long. So this number is ul number um, let me have integer ui number. So, this generally I have a habit of declaring the first character will tell what is the data type. So, ui is ui number, ul is unsigned long number, ui is unsigned integer number. So, anywhere in the code if I see I would know what is the data type. So, this will return the number. So, long I will pass the number comma 4 digits and I can make it 5 digit also. So, let us see if it works. There is an error.
so I have to point or to pass a pointer and will pass the pointer since it is the uh, middle of the buffer if it is just the starting if I just pass this one it would generally arrays are transferred as pointers ok no array no error so let me see now stop paste hmm. copy paste this paste number is equal to 2021 number is equal to 2022 basically it has converted I am not just sending it back what I did was whatever received I based on the position and number of character I converted into an integer and sent back the integer hope you are able to follow that so now um, in the driver you can transmit you can receive a string you can receive a packet packet when I mean it has a starting and ending character then you can search if you have a certain pattern or character in the received string and take a decision then pass a string number the ascii number and convert it into a integer so with this uh, it covers almost all the things that a ur driver has to do so with this driver you, you will be able to write any state uh, like communicate to any Wi-Fi module like ESP series or 4G modem or 2G modem with this driver is more than enough you have to build over it the stack over it that we will do in a later uh, okay let us quickly check out how the microchip uh, code generator will also generate a transmit and receive function if you remember from our earlier lessons so we had uh, PIC project started with MCC Microsoft, Microsoft code uh, We set this as a main project so this processor is pic 16 f 18854 so for this processor the code generator will work this is microsoft code configure so let me start the code configure for this okay, if you come here uh, if you go down to the modules you have uart so in uart uh, enable uart enable transmit enable you are in you are interrupts so we will not uh, generate interrupts uh, now we will just check out the functions before generating the interrupts as soon as you generate these interrupts lot of functions will be created it might get a bit confusing for you so if we go with generate so this is a baud rate transmission bits 8 bit are the code changes which the code which uh, it will in insert into the or old code so clicking on this button will insert that so now it has done all the written all the functions so let's go back to our functions and see mm. close this Leo map so uart.c so we had uart initialize then we had send character and receive character we were directly reading in from the buffer now if you go to the projects and uh, uart this is the microsoft code configure generated file so there is initialize botcon that is a bot rate it has initialized receiver status transmitter transmission status and the so this this is uh, not uh, board this you have to go and just check out the data sheet what it is I uh, hope you will able to read that and this is the baud rate high and baud rate low I think this is a 64 bit uh, baud rate generator is there uh, sorry it has a 16 bit baud rate generator that is why they have two registers and one uh, transmission status and reception status they have enabled that then uh, uart read they are going to read from it is returning the register value similarly we had uh, in our code let me close yeah uart.c we were directly reading from 
RC register in their code in this processor it is RC1 register I think this has multiple UART so it is called RC1 register and to write TX1 REG we had TX REG this has multiple UART so uh, the first UART TX uh, UART1 not for the first uh, TX1 UART <coughs> they are writing the register. The only difference is they are waiting for the interrupt flag before uh, sending the ne next data. What we were doing is we were sending the data and waiting for the data to be completed that is the difference here. So, it is the same functions. So, there when we wrote we went through the data sheet and wrote it here it has given it automatically. Now, if you come back to the code uh, compiler co code configure. Mm, enable UART interrupts. So, it will write all the interrupts. So, let me generate yes. Then if you come to project and open UART. So, even if you see now they also have like a TX buffer we only had RX buffer for TX we did not use the interrupt we were just waiting for the flag to be set. So, if they have written for both TX and RX they have a buffer and it will transmit and from the TX buffer and the received data will come into the RX buffer. So, here they are all uh, enabling the interrupts. So, write if interrupt is not enabled they are just writing data into T1 RX register. If interrupts is enabled what they are doing is whatever is there in the buffer using the transmit ISR they will transmit one after the other automatically. So, for example, let us assume you have 100 bytes which you have to send. So, you have to fill this buffer with that 100 bytes then what it will do is it will transmit all the 100 bytes using interrupts means there in our code we are waiting each byte waiting for each bytes to be transmitted. So, this is a more efficient way to do it but I did the other way because it is simpler to understand. Similarly, they have a receiver interrupt ISR which will fill up the if there is no error it will call this function that will fill the Rx buffer one after the other. It is similar to ours but bit more organized way of writing coding. But what happens is it is so organized that it by the, during when you start up it becomes too confusing. But once you are uh, gotten used to what we have written this is something which you can uh, easily realize. So, next let us get into Renaissance. Let me close this. <coughs> so, if you uh, remember our display chapter, so I had it, uh, I have connected it to my hardware. I, I, we were not, uh, the Proteus does not allow Renaissance simulation, so we had connected it to the hardware. So, I have the same hardware here. So, let me uh, open the schematic of the hardware that I have. So, what I have, so this also has a TX and RX pin. So, it is there here. Um, so, I am using this pin number 24 and 25 that is RX0 and TX D0. 0 is the UART port, port 0. Similarly, there are uh, there is another UART port uh, UART RXD1 and TXD1. This has two UARTs. So this one we had used it for the display. So I'm not going to use this. I'll go. I'll be using UART0, RXD0 and TXD0. Okay. Let me open the code. So first thing is you have to make sure that those pins are not used as an IO port. So, it was pin P11, P1.1 and P1.0, 1.1, 1.0 it was used as output. I think we used this for driving the LEDs uh, in our first code. Let me make it unused and I will generate it off. Or else what will happen if this pin has uh, been used as an output or input pin it will not show up here. So, I will give you an example see UART 0 is here it is now visible now UART 0 is visible if 
for example if this port has been made as uh, see it is already telling this is already been used as for rx so if you make both of this as input or output then that will not reflect here okay you are zero you are zero only no you are rx you yeah, are zero transmit and receive function so i cannot i am not able to do the transmit function because i think in the ports the following detect you must change the setting in view for other purpose tx0 was used for p12 sorry it was p12 1 1 and 1 2 not 1 0 and 1 2 it is 1 p 1.1 and 1.2 that was the reason <coughs> it was not coming up there we generate code and if i go to serial now u at 0 receive and transmit both the functions have come up so u at 0 if you come here so here channel 0 i have kind of selected for u at 0 and if you come to UR0, receive and transmit. Receive 9600 baud rate, all the settings are here, 8 bit mode, no parity. And in transmit function also 9600, single transfer mode, 8 bit. So, these settings we will keep it and generate the code. So, now what happens here is um, if you go to the serial dot c it has created the driver for all the configuration that we went through microchip this is automatically made here even mcc did the same thing so during initialization first thing that you have to do here is okay we have to start so uh, before that let's write the uart driver and add new file source file to header uart dot h if not defined u at underscore h I will and if and next is u at dot c source file Here hash include u r dot h and all these micro uh, micro drivers we have to add so that is in main dot c there are a couple of micro drivers which you have to have uh, this micro drivers and ports you have to add even serials also serial also I will take up. So now let us write our function. So first thing we will void, uh, we will write it similar to what we had run written in uart initialize. Okay. Let me open this code in microchip also. Okay, if you have come to this section without skipping the microchip section please watch the microchip section because i have explained the whole working of the driver there the code thing i will explain whichever is uh, linked to renaissance i will explain here but all the functions general functions that we have uh, written please watch this starting of this video else it will become a bit confusing for you why i am writing all these things i will set this as main project in source file uart dot c uh, we had uart initialize and the name is correct uart initialize and main uart dot let me prototype this to initialize you have to go to serial dot c you have to start the uart this is very important if you do not do this uart functions will not work 
So, first I will write only transmission means no error. Okay, you have to start the initialize and this also you have to call in your main. Before that let me include let me initialize the uart here. So, now uh, there is something called a serial dot c where the drivers have been configured means the port has been configured and serial user means this is where user will write the code. So, we do not write any code here. Here inbuilt it has written all the code required for the port to work in user uh, serial user what happens this is where we have to write the code. So, there are some functions which have been created. So, it will call this interrupt if as soon as it receives a character, it will call this when it transmits a character. I will show you, I will put a drop point and show you. So, before that we need a flag, okay. before that uh, ur.c is initialized is done. Now, let us write send character, what we uh, did here ur send character. Let me prototype this. So, here uh, what we can have a variable for this flag. You see do what send interrupt flag. I will tell you how to use this. Just I am having a flag here you have to make it extern in dot h. So, I will make this flag is equal to 0. Okay, while this flag is equal to 0, I will wait. So, here it is not clear watchdog timer, it is uh, Reset watchdog timer, I think. Watchdog timer restart. Okay, and this is not the register for this. So, for this, what we have to do here is uh, if you come to your serial.c, you can see the transmit function it will be create create start stop receive send you are 0 send what you have to do is uh, you have to pass the buffer and the length of the buffer but we will only do a single character in you in our you are you will go here and we have to send a pointer to this. Comma, we are only transmitting one character. Okay. I cannot uh, send this and send two characters because this the unsigned character will only hold one character. Okay. So, now what happens? Uh, since we have uh, we did the code generator, it will generate an interrupt. That interrupt is there in user.c. So, this is the interrupt. This function is a callbacks function when uart0 finishes transmission. <coughs> this interrupt will be called as soon as our transmission is complete and here I will set the flag. So, I will run it in debug man and show this get, getting an interrupt here. Okay. So, when it calls this function, I will set this flag indicating that the data has been transmitted and here I have to call uart.h. So, in our uart.c, I have cleared it, I have sent it for transmission and I will wait till that flag will be set because that is what we have done in CR. We are setting the flag when after the completion of data transfer. Okay clear the flag, send the data, wait wait in this loop until the 
data is transmitted. So now let us see if this works. First thing I have to do uart initialize in my main code which I have done and uh, this let this function all be there and let me transmit ok let me comment whole of this advanced comment line let me transmit uh, that single quote e and let there be a small delay millisecond 100 Again, all these things we had shown in that delay chapter, how to write the millisecond delay. So, let me see if um, this builds, build project, there is an error. UART, no, it is not UART initialize, it is UART. So, unmatched prototype, watch talk read timer reset in we had used in uart.c here, this is not there because I have not included that watch talk timer header file, here it is watch talk timer. Let us build the code now. Okay, there is no error. So, what I will do is I can uh, since I am using actual hardware and uh, debugger, I can put breakpoints. So, let us go to our main function and let me put a breakpoint here before transmission. Let me connect the hardware. So, what I have done here is to that uh, this pins which I showed you, I have used I have used a uh, USB to Water. I have used one of uh, these actually. Mm. I have used one of these converters. Okay, where I have plugged this into the USB and this I am getting TX RX. So, the TX, as I uh, explained in the microchip chapter, the TX of the processor will come to the RX of this con converter and this TX will go to the RX of the processor. This is a cross connection. So, let me open up my terminal app which is doclet. So, the COM port is COM7, port rate is 9600, ok, let this one keep running. Now, let me con connect to the hardware. It is connected to the hardware. Mm. If you go to main, let me put a breakpoint here. Let it come here and stop. It has stopped here. So when I transmit, now let, let me get into step by step. I have cleared this. So before transmitting, I have to. I'll put a breakpoint in serial user. So, after transmission I have to get an interrupt here. So, let me continue here. See it has come to the interrupt function. So, if you see my port here, nothing has come. Uh, I think I have not connected the port one second. So, it come here, it breakpoint is working. Let me remove all the breakpoints. See E has started to come. Okay. Hope you are able to follow that. So, now let us do send string. I will just copy this. As I told you all the drivers which are we are writing are platform independent. It will work in uh, microchip as well as Renaissance or any other controller. That is why we write everything rather than using the inbuilt one. If you use the inbuilt one it is not platform to platform compatible. So, you are dot C send character is done. Send string 
the prototype is also and and here it is not it is constant this compiler it needs constant unsigned character there will be some small differences from compiler to compiler it was end screen and in main let me message from rl r5 f 102 aa and i'll remove this I don't need this any longer and here i have to type cast it to character semicolon is missing so if you see this now let me clear this i should get that message so something is wrong we, we didn't get that only ma came let me restart it once again the ma let me check out what is the issue basically the interrupt uh, it's not waiting for the interrupts i think this m and this a has come you know send while sorry it should have, i should wait if is equal to is equal to 0 i have to wait because the interrupt will set it to 1 so basically what happened was uh, it, before transmitting only i was loading newer uh, characters into the buffer okay now you will get it let me clear it message from rl r5f 102 aa so now we are send string has worked then next is our send long and send float main so you what i will uh, drop the whole code in the description below i'll have a link of it so you can download it you are dot h and there is one more thing that we have to make which we did it in microcho that is we created something called as a general functions and put all the general functions so this is calling some float to ascii string and all these things we put it into a general functions so we have to do that here also create new file so general functions dot h and here uh, we had written it in the display few functions in display that is these things let me move them to general function because the same functions i'll be using in uart from display dot c copy all these things again don't jump directly to renasas watch all the microchip and come to renasas because in microchip i had explained all these things a 
pasted it here and now in display dot c I have to include general functions or it will not know where these functions are because we have moved it to general functions. Let us build it and see. F7 will build it. Uh, the failure one. So in general functions dot h I declare this. F7. Unmatched prototype. Yeah. Here since I moved uh, these functions are there in general functions. F7 to build it. It has built it. Okay, now uh, to transmit send long, let me go to main. We had this i number comma five digits. Then we had float f number comma five. That is the real part and two decimal points. And I have to also use this else it not. Work. Oh, you cannot see this increment. F number is let us have some string also. For new line, I will do slash r slash n. the code and start it. See both of them are coming but f number and i number are coming in new lines. If you do not want that we want it to come in the same line the comma See here f number and i number both of them are. Now we have transmitted character, string, integer and float. So next thing what we have to do, uh, do here is start receiving the data. For receiving we had done set up a few more variables here in ur.c. Let us do the same thing here. Receive data, receive data counter, receive data flag. Let me use the same variables here also you are dot let me close all of them and open whichever I want. One is main you are dot h you are dot c. I have this and in you are dot h we had this. Okay, the buffer size is 25. So now let's up, let us set up the receiver. To set up the receiver, if you come here uh, in user dot c, for transmit we had use this one. Send for receive you have to use this. So basically in here what will happen is you have to first itself set up the receiver, telling me telling it this is my buffer and this is my length. So I will show you how I am doing that. I will go to ur initialize dot start. 
here after starting I have to initialize the receive. Now here I have to pass what is the Rx buffer. So in my case I will not take it into a buffer first only I will take it up into each character. Like every character I want an interrupt. If you are using a buffer you can pass the buffer and number of receive. I mean, let us assume you have put it to 10. So you will not get any interrupt until 10 character comes. I do not want that to happen. Even some, uh, I want the interrupt to come on every character. It is a bit of overload on the processor but for my logic I want that. Receive. Instead of buffer I want it in receive data and you have to pass a pointer to that comma every character give me a interrupt. This is must and after receiving the interrupt you have to tell set this up again or else you will not get the next interrupt. For that you have to call this here also for example let me go to user. So this is where the interrupt will come receive and this function callback function when you are 0 finishes reception. So when it finishes reception I will say I have to set it up again if you do not this you will not get the next interrupt because that is how the internal driver is written. So in when we started with microchip we wrote everything so here we are using the internal whatever the code generator used. Okay, now let me do this what I will do here is I can put a breakpoint and show you it, that it comes into this function. I mean, let me just check in initialize I have done this. If you do not do this you will never get an interrupt. So let me put this register to watch also. Let me clear all the previous watches and again here watch and notation unsigned decimal or whatever you want you can have it here. Then uh, one more thing if you have missed the previous chapter there is something called as periodic updating. Periodic updating this debug tool you have to make access by stopping instruction and every 500 milliseconds or 0.5 seconds this will be updated it means it will execute a stop instruction automatically get this register value and continue. If you make it no you cannot see this being updated live only when you stop it will get updated if you make it x Yes, every 500 millisecond it will stop whatever is executing get the register value and continue with the execution of the code. So let me put a breakpoint here also just to know that this interrupt is called when it receives a data. For that let I have to also set, set up here let me send yes. So let me run the code. So it is transmitting as soon as I send S, see it, the, it has got the interrupt here and in the receive data the value is S. Let me remove this, okay. stop and remove. So if S is coming here. So let me put another like SATISH. All of will come, but you can only see that the last byte only will come here. H has come. It has transmitted everything got loaded and the last character was H. So that one has been caught here. So now <coughs> as we are done in microchip, we will set up the interrupt function. So what did we do? Uh, interrupt function was in ur.c here. So I have to take from here and to this receive data this character will automatically be taken here I was loading into the resist from the register into this variable but because of this receive uh, interrupt which I have set up this will automatically come into this variable. So let me run this code now and also put a I will watch the whole buffer. 
serial ur dot c receive buffer the whole of this i can watch here nothing is there so as soon as i send i should have received okay it stopped somewhere okay as soon as i send this that should have come here s a t i s h that has come into the buffer so if i send it once again one more s a t i s h has come here if i send once again it is coming here and like last time we were using this no in the microchip i send hi this it should come to the first location see hi has come here okay so the now you are able it is able to receive a whole string into the buffer again check out the microchip chapter to understand how this receive had explained clearly that how, why i have written this so go through the chapter you will understand this I'm just copy pasting code from there now this all this flag will be set up so if i go to my main now so if receive flag i just copy the whole thing that we had done there and just paste it here if this flag is set uh, main so this is not required anymore this anyway we have seen it working and here it is not unsigned character it is constant unsigned character when you are transmitting a string and for this to work we had a few more uh, lcd go to anyway not using the lcd so this i counter is there so what happens here is in inline declaration of this uh, variables is not allowed in renaissance so you have to declare a variable like this here and then use it here then we had few more variables ul number and micro what's the microchip code for this and sign long ul number then we had unsign in ui number then we had i think a status also let's see if i missed out any more variables i don't want this since i'm able to debug here no i am not going to show you on the display also five warnings are expecting function prototype let me remove all this lcd code what happened was in this driver no the lcd uh, write string is in a different format for renaissance that is why all this error is coming up if you have seen that lcd chapter uh, we had that issue there and from here i had to copy general functions few more things for the such string to work again check out the microchip chapter only then you will understand what i am trying to do here so general functions dot h these are few more we introduced to search the string general functions dot c then get string length string compare so search string it is in general functions i need it here one more syntax error
think we have missed a bracket somewhere. I think this bracket is missing. Yeah. Redefining success and failure. Just ignore that. So now, <coughs> let's uh, write it into the message from RN. Then if I send hi, he should search for that and send me hello. So if I send Satish, nothing should happen. Only thing is that it will come into this buffer uh, as Satish. If I send hi, it is sending back hello. Basically what we did here was, whatever string came, we were able to search a particular sequence like h hi and send back the hello. And the next one what we tried out was a number. This is very, as I mentioned in micro chapter, I, if I want to transfer some number into this one, it should read that as a string because whatever you transmit from UART will only go as a string. It will take that string, convert it into a number and send back the number. It's not like it's just uh, echoing the same string or sending back the string, same string. It is taking that string, converting it into a number and giving it back to me. Where was that? Oh, yeah, it was here. Number in here. Sorry, I think you missed that. So if I send hi, hello is coming. If you send 2022, 20, you should get back the number as 2022. Means whatever string which you sent, it searched that there is a number here by the keyword num, then gave back converted this string to 2022 to a number and gave it back to me. Hope you are able to follow this. With this knowledge, you should be able to connect to any uh, devices like a 4G or 2G modem or a Wi-Fi module or any UART device and do all the basic operations. Hope, hope you are able to follow this. This chapter was slightly longer, but, uh, but I feel it had to be longer because this is the basics of how to transmit and receive the data from different manu uh, from to and from different devices and how to go through that data and make sense of it.